So today we're going to be looking at a polling application where a user can vote and then we can get the results on the page instantaneous as people are voting. And this episode is just a simple example on Action Cable and it's not focused around persisting the votes within our backend storage. And typically the results would be on a separate page where you are actually monitoring the results as people are voting. So let's have a look at this page. At the top here, you'll see that I'm just defining what our powers are. And then I have the form where people can vote. And this is just a simple form where we have a input field and it's a radio buttons and we're just passing the collection of the powers that we defined earlier. Then we have our progress bars. And we're just looping through each one of the powers in the array and then we can just create our bootstrap progress bar. So within our visitors coffee script here, we have this voter function. And what we need to do is create a new array, and this will keep track of all the previous clicks. So whenever we click on a new power, then we know to reduce the previous selection by one vote and then broadcast that out. So we'll listen for the event change on the input option. And within your application, you wouldn't necessarily want to capture this input whenever it changes, but rather maybe just an ID tag or something like that. So what we'll first do is we'll take our value and we'll push it into our clicks array. Then we'll call the action cable voted function on our vote channel. And then we'll also call reduce. And the reason why we are calling both of these is because one, we need to increment our vote value. And then we also need to reduce the previous vote value. So we need to return from our clicks the previously selected value. So to do this, we call our clicks. And then we call click.length, which if we have five votes so far, it would return five and then it would subtract by two. And the reason why we subtract by two is because remember within an array, zero is your first value and the last value would be four because this is the last voted on. So in order to get the previous value, we would actually need to return the third slot, which is actually the fourth slot if you include zero. And then since we are using TurboLinks, whenever the TurboLinks load events called, we all trigger our vote. So once the vote function on the JavaScript side posts to the action cable, it's going to hit the action cables vote channel on the JavaScript side. And then for both of the voted and reduced that's called from our vote function, it's going to perform voted and reduce. And this will create a callback to the action cable on the server side. So on our vote channel on the server side, we have our voted and our reduce, and then we are accepting in the parameter data. We will then call the action cable server broadcast, and then pass in the channel that we're going to broadcast on. The first is the power, and then we are sending in the method. And for the voted, we want to send over the method add, and for reduce, we're sending over the method subtract. And back to our vote channel on the client side, the server broadcast is going to call this receipt function. If we look at this, this is where we're actually creating the visual change of the progress bar sliding, updating the view count. So first we're setting a variable power to our data power that we received from the server side. And then we're getting the current power count for the power that we just voted on. So remember, this is gonna be received twice. We have one for the upvote and then one for the vote removal. So if our method is equal to add, then we're going to set the progress bars count to the count plus one. Otherwise, if the method was subtract, then we're going to set the count and we're going to subtract it by one. So now that we have our vote registered, we need to take the total count. So what we'll do is we'll set the total count to zero. We're looping through each one of the progress bars and then we're just incrementing our total count by the count that's in the text. We can then go through each one of the progress bars and set the width of the progress bar to the current count of the progress bar, divide that by the total count, times it by 100, and then add the percent. So you can see as we receive messages, we can see the add and subtract occurring on each one of the broadcasts. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. In our next episode in this series, we'll look at how we can secure our Action Cable channels so you must be authorized to listen and receive broadcasts on a particular channel. For more videos, 
Check out driftandruby.com.